What's happening everyone, my name is Anthony Santana and welcome back to The Letter. And previously, what I remember playing back in January, uh, was the party ballroom thing got crashed by a drunk woman who claims Luke is the father of her unborn child. And that's pretty much it. And also we chose to take a break from Luke, I also remember that. Let me just check the relationship since there's apparently something new. And of course, I already have her relationship with Luke almost gone. Good job, me. Anyways, I think we're actually almost done with this chapter. Because so I saw the uh, the CG gallery uh, for the game, and we're pretty much done with chapter 2. I wish the same can be said about what I'm about to do. Simple isn't the adjective I will use to describe the task at hand. Because really, how does one tell their husband that they want to separate, and say that, no, this is not a divorce? Not yet, at least. The possibility is there. But still, how am I even to explain uh, that to Luke without him throwing a fit? Yeah, good luck with that. Cutting too deeply into my sausages, uh, I open my mouth to excuse myself. Not sure what phrase that is, if she was actually cutting into sausages or... <laughs> Okay, seems like it. That is, until I spy Luke mashing and stirring his poached eggs with a fork like a petulant child. Okay, so they were having breakfast. I forgot the setting. He has been silent all the time, chin in his hands and elbow resting on the table. I worry that my absence from the d after the debacle may have caused more harm than good. Luke? Achievement unlocked. It's not y Okay, it's you. <laughs> I... I think we need a bit of a break. Uh-oh. You know, some time apart. And at my words, he grows still and silent. I'm not quite sure whether I should be worried or not. I take it as my cue to uh, keep talking. Uh, not it's quite. not permanent or anything like that. Just for a while. Also, I'm just gonna uh, say this ahead of time before any further things happen. Um, there will occasionally be some audio glitches. I've done my best to fix them. I am running this now on my, not on my Mac, I'm streaming it from my brother's Windows computer to my Mac, and I'm recording it on my Mac. Only reason I don't install it here is because I'm short on memory and this game is like 5 gigs and I could use that for editing and recording. In a few days, perhaps. I was thinking I can move back into our penthouse in the meantime, but I, I won't be moving out right away. So that I can help settle everything here. I mean, at least she's, uh, at least she's giving both sides of, like, I'm not leaving you to do this all by yourself. But I do want to go back, spend some time at our old place. And I haven't even thought of packing yet. And I'll want to ask Johans to assume some of our staff. Uh, unless you want the penthouse anyway. Then I'll stay here instead. Hmm? No, oh, you take the penthouse. It'll be easier for you. Will it? It isn't supposed to be this easy, is it? Can he really react aloof to it? Isn't this- Oh god, that audio glitch. Isn't this to your liking? I imagine that you'd like the space and independence. You'll have the bed and covers to yourself, and you can have whatever you want prepared for meals. You can even have all the wine you want, though I- I'd rather that you don't. This isn't about that, Hana. Well, it's partly that, but... The man stops playing with his food, choosing instead to push the plate aside. What's wrong, Luke? He slumps back in his chair and just stops short of putting his feet up on the table. I suspect he's wanting some wine or absinthe by now, but any sort of alcohol is suspiciously absent in his hands. Aside from that disaster yesterday, and you telling me you want a divorce? Everything is peachy keen. One second. I don't recall her saying she wants a divorce. Will you want me to start in the letters, then? To start the divorce settlements and whatnot? Will you be seeking ways to throw me out onto the street without a penny to my name? It's taking it too far. Oh, Luke, this isn't a divorce. I just told you this is only temporary. Are you really having a sulk because of what she said yesterday? I am having a sulk because you believe her. Well, that's, uh, reasonable, I guess. 
You stormed out and now you're asking for us to split up? Soon enough, you'll want to throw me out like I'm a piece of trash. Do you think I would be this calm if I believed her, Lucille Mitchell Wright? Because believe me, if I did, well... Because believe me, if I did, well, it wouldn't be pretty. Besides, I know how you feel about children. It makes a whole statement laughable. Sure, whatever you say. His mouth draws into a thin line, and I can't bring myself to comment on his, his half-hearted reply. To me, the silence that follows feels oppressive. It only emphasizes the wall uh, that has been built up by my uh, obeisance and his hubris. And it looms between us, keeping us apart. When are you leaving? In a week? It won't take that long to pack. After all saints, perhaps? I'll go and inform the staff of this. He only nods. And I'll be lying if I said that didn't disappoint me. Okay, let's see. What's new? What's new here? During breakfast, Hannah asked Luke for a break. She'd be moving back to their penthouse for a couple of days. Despite trying to remain aloof, her husband accused her of wanting a divorce. Hannah insisted she simply needed a break from him. And we have here rings breaking. Yep, doesn't look good. I expected more resistance. The man could be stubborn as a mule if he wants to be. Perhaps I can now I can leave now, just to spite him. But that isn't like me. Even if this does end in a divorce, a thing we both surely wish to avoid, we can still leave on amicable terms. There's no point in making a mountain of a molehill. What are you still doing here? Just leave. You still have some packing to do, don't you? Damn, I really don't like his negative attitude. Go ahead. I won't stop you. He's pretty much just saying, open invitation, divorce me. Go ahead and do nothing. There isn't much to do, it seems. Whenever I step up to the plate and try to take responsibility for something, Perhaps because everything is already being handled by someone hired specifically for that job. And with Johans overseeing the staff and Luke handling everything else as a whole, that doesn't leave much for me. I can't even take the job of delegation, because all it takes is a word to one of the senior staff and everything will be taken care of for me. Moving in here a few days ago may have very well been the chore that took the most effort from me. And that didn't take any real effort at all. Yes, Hana, go buy a mansion in the middle of nowhere. Good idea. Great plan. Yeah, that it's clearly not even a good plan anymore, is it? There are no dishes to set aside and busy myself with. Any mess left behind is now nearly non-existent. To sit on a counter while eating cake is supposed to be my next plan. Alas, there isn't even one to finish off, and I don't really know what brought me to the kitchen in the first place. It's not like I'm craving anything else, nor do I have any unfinished business left here. But there's a calling to this room. Speaking of calling, why not do just that? Might as well, since I have nothing else to do. At least that will require some effort on my part. With how cut off from the rest of Luxburn the mansion is, and with how long it was abandoned before we moved in, having a landline is out of the question. The solution, supposed to, uh, the solution is supposed to be our mobiles, though. It isn't much considering how spotty the signal is in the area. That's true. It'll take a bit of maneuvering to get even a single bar as it is. It takes a bit as I said it would. I have to park my rear on one of the cold drawers, uh, but that suits me just fine. Another matter that needs my effort is who to call. She who must not be named is certainly off the list. Oh, what's her name? The drunk woman? The policeman's wife? That doesn't leave much in the category of, of close friends who attended the party, along with the category of who else is awake at this early hour. But soon enough, I manage, to, I manage and the call goes through. Hello, Rebecca Gales here. Oh, hey. Uh, who's this? Good morning, Becky. Yeah, I'm curious about that. <laughs> you responded to your RSVP through the phone. 
It's all saved in here, of course. Okay, reasonable. I thought I'd like to say hi and make plans and get together sometime. Also, how does she have a picture of Rebecca already that quickly? <laughs> I mean, did they take one at the party last night? Also, I'd love to hear news about your mother and father and about you, my dear. Oh, I hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, you're good. It's sports day at school today, so I was just prepping for that. Figures that you'd be a teacher as well. I'm sure your students must absolutely adore you. <laughs> Don't know about that. Oh, really? Mathematics? History, actually. Anyway, it's real nice to know you've got my number. I was going to ask for yours because Mom wanted to keep in touch. You could have asked, silly girl. I would have gladly given it to you. Couldn't, though, because, well, the thing that happened. But really, I'm sorry, though. I gotta run. School, schedule, stuff. You know, that audio cutting off might actually be a nice little effect, considering how low signal uh, people get in the house. Is there anything else you want to say? Don't want to use the mobile while driving? Oh, of course, of course. I shouldn't keep you. Unless that cutting off was part of the game, and I'm just thinking it isn't. And it's just the crappy streaming that <laughs> that's going on. But I wanted to thank you for your company yesterday. Not a problem. I was hoping you could thank Zachary on my behalf as well. Hey. He was really kind and wonderful. Well, you can tell him that yourself if you want. I can give you his number. I'm surprised she doesn't already have it if she hired him as a photographer on more than one occasion. Oh, no, no, I don't want to be a bother. Intruding on his privacy. Pretty sure he'd be fine with it. If you two on a first name basis and all. So, his number, right, it's... The call starts to go to static, much to my frustration. Oh boy. A strange clicking noise dr uh, drowns out most of our words, too. I can barely understand what she's saying. And the line completely dies. Uh-oh. I can feel a headache coming along. It's just, a it's just building up, starting from a light throbbing on one side of my head. The static is gone, and that helps a lot. But there is still that incessant, horrible clicking. Again and again and again. Which doesn't make sense. The mobile's turned off, isn't it? And if it isn't coming from the phone, then where? Looking about, I can't help but keep, uh, let my eyes be drawn to the hatch leading into the wine cellar once more. Oh no. That's when the clicking stops, and I can hear that crying. That familiar crying from before. Okay, so the cry of the woman in the cellar. What happened the other day when I was told that nobody should have been, when I was told that nobody should have been down there? I tried to forget it because of how it unsettled me. So I got chills. One can hardly do that when I'm when I'm looking at the very thing I'm trying to forget. Somebody is crying down there again. But if I leave it alone, it simply won't stop bothering me for the rest of the day. They might have forgotten to lock it with the party going on. This again. If somebody is pulling my leg, I will not be happy! Oh boy, she opened it. True enough, all it takes is a bit of a pull to open the hatch. As I look down to the cellar, a sense of uneasiness washes over me. I'm getting my fingers ready onto the keyboard. It isn't just the sudden onset of vertigo and nausea, but also the darkness. It's suffocating. And as I look down, it feels as if it's looking back at me. I worry that something will suddenly pu uh, pull me into the deep. Yeah, keep staring down there and something will. The cries drown beneath the shrieks that start echoing in my head. High and shrill like nails begin being dragged across the chalkboard. They're all screaming, shouting at me. And I can just feel her rage. Help me. She wants to drown me, drag me down and crush me in the very depths of darkness until there is nothing left of me. A deep abyss waits for me. For my death. They're all calling for it. This is a nightmare. Oh boy. There's a rope around my neck and I can feel the rest of me being torn apart. Is the room getting redder? 
Or is that just an effect of the fog? And they're still screaming. I'm screaming. Though it is not my voice that escapes my lips. It claws through, climbing up and forcing its way up my throat like putrid bile. I choke and gag, yet I scream and shriek all at the same time. And I'm me, but not me. Oh boy. Resist the ghost's influence. What? How? How? Fuck! <laughs> Cute. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Lag. Don't start now. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, good. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm curious. Let's save that here, and then let's go back. Can I go back? Oh, I can't go back! I want to go back. I want to check that. I want to let- I want to see what happens if it gets us. So that goes spelled out pie. Screaming stops and dies down. Wait. Did that not do anything? It's a moment of reprieve and I want to believe that I'm finally safe. But it's quiet. Too quiet. Oh boy. <laughs> I was curious about that. Anyways, back to where we were. I got a new relationship thing, really? With who? I went, wait, did the relationship with Rebecca go down? Is that it? It pushes me down to my knees before I'm prone and vulnerable on my stomach. It makes me tumble and I can feel, uh, I can just feel my whole body seizing, uh, writhing on the floor. Everything and nothing hurts. It feels like I'm on the verge of death. And if I'm not dying, I'm near, I nearly wish I actually am. Hana? Hana, what is going on in here? Good, he worries. Why are you? <gasps> Seeing Luke, something uh, snaps back, and I am able to take a gasp of air on, on my own volition for the first time in what felt like centuries. I would have rejoiced and cried for his name if the pain still did not rack my body. Oh, you see, he does care. Instead, all I can do is stare listlessly as he comes to my side and lifts me up, cradling me in his arms. He tries to get me to my feet, perhaps to take me out of here. But all he's able to do is get me to sit, make sure I'm not thrashing, trashing on the floor. I can still feel my muscles spasm, the limbs jerking like a puppet's on the string. Luke holds me tight and keeps me still so that I do not hurt myself anymore. Whatever it is that happened, it has my mind feeling frayed and, be and battered. Eventually the pain dies down into a dull ache, and my own tongue stops feeling like cotton. It's only now that I can feel the wetness on my cheeks, tears streaking down my face. <coughs> a coughing wrecks my body. Now that I don't, lo now that I don't feel like cough, what? A coughing wrecks my body. Now that I don't feel like choking, and it just all feels so horrible. But I don't care. I don't care. <coughs> Please. What happened here? Who did this to you? I, I don't know. You're safe now, Hana. You're safe now. And I think that's the end of the chapter. It is! Now we're on Zachary. And this is where I'm gonna end this episode. I'm not sure how short it is, but... I feel like starting a new episode with a new chapter. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me see, is this new? How new? Oh, profile new, okay. Let's just look at his profile real quick. If you guys want to read through it, go on ahead. Uh, you can pause right now before I finish the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.